Senator Braun. Thank you, Madam Chair. So when we've had uh, opportunity to uh, talk, you know, early on, I've been a proponent of reforming health care by making it more transparent, more competitive. Uh, I think that's largely been lost in all the other issues that have come up. Still interested in that, but a subject that is really creating controversy across the country would be gender-affirming care for young people, and it's on the HHS website. Um, I'd like to work through what uh, gender-affirming care actually means and do it with a couple subjects in mind, drugs and surgeries. Start with prescription drugs. I don't think these drugs have been proven safe and effective for the use you're recommending. It's probably why the FDA has not approved puberty blocking and hormone therapy drugs for gender transition. Anytime a physician you know, prescribes it, they're doing it off-label. Would you agree that off-label prescriptions for usages not approved by the FDA are potentially dangerous for patients, especially kids? Senator, thank you for the question. And that is a question that uh, HHS, including FDA, CDC, have been uh, tackling quite a bit as a result of the pandemic. What I would simply say to you is that the FDA would raise alarms if they saw that a, a particular medicine or uh, treatment were being misused. And at this stage, what we know is that for a drug to be out there available, it has to be safe and effective uh, as, as FDA has found. And so what I would simply say with regard to this particular subject is uh, when individuals go in for care, it is their physician who is making that decision with them about what type of uh, medicine or treatment they should receive. You know, if you use that same logic on what we've just navigated through COVID, uh, it seems like there would have been a different point of view. And to me, uh, for many parents across the country, uh, this has more potentially tragic consequences, and it seems like it's a double standard. Let's look at surgeries that would be even more uh, impactful. And I'm not going to mention the particulars there. It's almost uh, grotesque to mention what could occur. Um, could you explain uh, what irreversible top and bottom sex change surgeries are and why that is on the portal as well. Senator, there, as you've just indicated, there are many different uh, types of procedures that can be deployed. Uh, what I will say to you is, again, in, in any case, no individual, no patient will proceed forward unless uh, his or her doctor has advised uh, of the procedure, and it is considered by uh, the FDA and others who have to go ahead and certify a medicine or a procedure to be safe and effective. So I'll try to distill it into a more simple form. In what case would it be appropriate to perform irreversible sex change surgery on kids? Those decisions are made by that individual uh, in cons consultation with physician and caregivers and no decision would be made without having consulted appropriately. You know, I think the government uh, shouldn't be pushing uh, or have it out there uh, on a portal that uh, moves you towards irreversible sex change therapy. And I think we just need to think about it carefully because we're navigating into territory uh, that we've never done before as a government. Uh, kids going through this or having a hard time, we should be maybe focusing more on mental health and not things that are irreversible. And I think leading uh, the HHS, it might be uh, a little more important to be a little more definitive rather than making it look like, well, uh, a laissez-faire approach and whatever happens, happens. I think that's out of sync with most of America. And it seems to me it'd be wise to maybe back up a little bit. 
Senator, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I believe that we should help those have the life-affirming care that they need. There are many uh, transgender youth who have actually gone in the opposite direction, taking their life. If we can make a life better for someone in America, we should, especially if in consultation with their physician, they approve of those procedures. Do you think it'd be reasonable, my last question, in the meantime, to maybe take this off the site until there's a little more uh, kind of science built into the approach, a little more discussion about what may or may not make sense, rather than having it out there where it looks like it condones the process. I would say to you that many of our medical experts would tell you that we've explored this uh, subject for a long time, and what we find is that we are helping uh, improve the lives of many Americans by providing them with the care that they have chosen with the informed consent of family and also with the consent and uh, advice of their own physician. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.